Hello, everybody. Hi, guess what? Today is March the 31st. Can you believe we are at the end of March already? <clears throat> Hello, everybody. It's so great to see you. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thank you so much to Mimsy and my other moderators hanging out with me today. Y'all, I'm going to be spending quite a bit of time at the sewing machine today, and we're going to knock out two clues this week. I really didn't want to do two clues this week, but guess what? Yesterday, out in the driveway, the pod showed up for all of my stuff, and I have to start packing. <laughs> Oh, I have to start packing. So that means we're doing two clues this week. We're revealing a big major part of this quilt, y'all. It's really starting to come together. For those of you wondering what the quilt's going to look like, you're going to have a really great idea after this week. Hello, everybody. And next week, we're going to meet for our last video in this series, and we'll do clue 15 next week. Hi, everybody. Yeah, I'm going to be spending lots of time at the sewing machine today with clues 13 and 14. I don't know if I will complete clue 14 with you, depending on how we're doing with time. But we're going to knock out clue 13 together and move on to clue 14. Hi, everybody. It's so great to see. I'm going to switch over to the cutting mat, and we're going to take a look at these two clues. So, uh, clue 13 and clue 14. These are the pieces we're working with. For clue 13, y'all, we are bringing out the 16 blocks that we made during clue number eight. Our orange peel blocks, we're working with those. And then we're also pulling out part of the clue we did during clue number two, where we cut uh, four strips of C fabric and we sewed them together. That's gonna be a little border around that section of the quilt. So after clue 13, this is what our goal is right here, right? We're working with the very center of the quilt and we're working our way to the outside. I'm so glad y'all are hanging out with me. Um, so this is clue 13. This is what we're going to do first. And then we're moving on to clue number 14. Y'all remember when we did these? This was like way back in the beginning, right? You're gonna need the 36 blocks we did during clue number one. Yeah, that was our first clue. You're gonna pull those out, and then you're also gonna pull out the D fabric strips that we cut during clue number seven, which I used the brown, right? And we're going to put a border around that. So after this week, we only have one more section that comes together after that. So, uh, <laughs> one of the things, I'm going to just move this off to the side. One of the things that I realized kind of pretty early on with this quilt series is that when I designed this quilt, it's a bigger quilt, y'all. Uh, when I designed the quilt and the size of the quilt, isn't she so pretty? Uh, one of the things I did not... It didn't even phase my mind, and I don't know why it didn't, because I struggle this with, with this with other projects that we work with that have some size to them, is unfortunately, you only see a portion of my table here because the camera is like right above. You only see so much. So a good portion of stuff today, I'm going to be like maneuvering this quilt back and forth. Um, so just bear with me. Like, I think if I had a full-time camera person who could maneuver the camera <laughs> without, like, just moving y'all all over the place, wouldn't that be lovely? But with my current setup, this is what we're dealing with, and you're only going to see portions of it at a time, right? But we're going to try and make it work. But I didn't really consider that, the size of this project, <laughs> and trying to make it during a live class. All right, so just to let you know, I have done some pre-work. I have sewn uh, several pieces together so that we're not here until tomorrow doing this. I have done some pre-work. But um, so with this section, we're making four borders, right? They're going to come together like this. 
The first two are going to have three blocks in a section, right? You take three and you make two pieces that go on the left and right. I'm going to sew one of those sections with you here today. So I have the three blocks. But I've already sewn this one, this section, and these sections to save us some time. And I did that also with clue number 14 so that we're not here forever doing those parts. <clears throat> uh, Chrissy said, clue 14, which strip is for the border? Four and a half or two and a half? Clue 14. Okay, so for clue 13, you're working with the strip that we cut during clue two, right? That's one and a half inch wide strip. And for clue 14, you're gonna wanna pull out the strips we cut during clue seven, and that is the four and a half inch wide strip, okay? That two and a half inch uh, brown border that you cut during clue seven, that's gonna be your binding. You've already cut it, so just keep that to the side. That's your binding. So we've done a lot of prep work already, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna put this to the side and uh, you'll see I have my strips here that uh, I've already sewn together. I'm gonna put those to the side for a minute. I've already attached one small border to uh, the side of my quilt. Isn't that lovely, right? And so we're gonna put that to the side and I am going to focus on sewing this section right here, just so you can see how it comes together and how I press my seams, right? So you will see uh, one of the borders coming together. So when you piece yours, you know what it's gonna look like. Then we're gonna throw all these things right onto the middle of our quilt. So one of the things uh, that I did wanna talk about is the arrangement of these orange peel blocks, right? That go around uh, the center medallion of this quilt. Now you will notice I have mine arranged and this is how I'm sewing mine. My orange peel blocks have uh, dark and light. Yours might be different, right? When I sew them together, I'm paying really close attention because I personally want all of my darks going from left to right, even carried down the side of that medallion. You could change them up, right? And you could have dark going in like little hills and valleys across your quilt if you wanted to, right? I personally love the effect that it gives when all of my darks are going in the same direction. So that's what I'm gonna try to pay close attention to when I'm sewing these sections together. All right, so you'll see this section is gonna come down the sides of our quilt first, right? We're gonna sew three blocks together, three for the left and three for the right. So I'm just paying close attention that my darks go from left to right for my particular quilt. <laughs> and so what I'm gonna do is I'm focused on that seam there and I'm gonna flip it right over and we're gonna sew these seams with a quarter inch seam allowance, all right? And I'm gonna bring you over to the sewing machine. We're gonna be sewing our first blocks together. Let me just move that just a little bit. Quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm bringing this right on over. I'm paying careful attention that that seam right in the middle, that matches up, right? You could throw a pin in there. You could glue baste your blocks together if that helps you. Uh, you could use some little binding clips. I want that seam right there to match up. That might mean, <laughs> see this at the bottom? I did not square up my blocks when I was done. Some came out exactly eight and a half. Some were a little bit tiny short. Um, 
So that might mean I have a little bit of extra at the top or bottom. My main concern is that that seam right there matches up. While we're sewing these pieces together, I did want to say that, uh, of course, after the live, I didn't see these comments during the live last week, but after the live, I saw some comments. Um, some of you are having issues downloading the Google documents that the links for these patterns, right? Um, I don't know how long it's been since you've done an update to the device you're using, but try doing a system update. Just go through and do an update and try to re-download the links again. And if that doesn't work, you can email me and I will send you the patterns, okay? All right, so there we go. I'm just gonna keep that right there. We'll press the seams in just a minute. While we're right here at the sewing machine, I'm going to bring this third block down. Remember, we're working like this, the left side of my quilt, but we're sewing the seams like this. I just want to make sure that I have the arrangement right on my block, right? And then I'll flip it over. I'm going to match up that little middle seam again. And sew that seam. So that is how you're going to piece your sections together. The first two sections that you're going to sew together have three blocks. That'll be for the left and the right. And then the top and bottom, your sections are going to have five blocks across. Okay? Those are the sections for right around that center medallion. Let me get that warming up. We're going to scoot this over and I'm going to press my seams. These two sections on the left and right, you only have two seams to press. I am pressing my seams open. We're going to give that iron time to heat up. And I'm just going to take my fingers and pre-press, <laughs> finger press them open like that. Don't you think these colors are so pretty? <laughs> I really do. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. All right, let's see if she's warmed up enough. I like to use a little steam. You don't have to. but I like to. And then I'm just gonna give a quick press from the front. Nice and flat with those seams, right? And then because I am paying really close attention to the direction of my blocks, right? Um, although it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, to you, it might matter, depending on if you're going to do the little V's back and forth with your darks, right? But uh, this section is going to go on the left or on the right. It doesn't matter because at this point, it's all the same. <laughs> okay, so this is where we're going to start running into the issue where my table is just not big enough, right? Right? You already cannot see the full medallion, but we're gonna try to make it work the best we can, and I'm gonna scoot it down here. At this point, the three blocks should be exactly the same size 
as this center medallion. So see that? I'm going to scoot it up. It should match the edge of your medallion. If this section is too big, you're going to want to square this section up before adding this, right? It should measure exactly the same. All right. And if this is not big enough, you might want to take this border off and replace it with a new border that brings it to the same size as this section here, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this right over. And I'm gonna line up those edges. And I might even throw in a couple pins today. Let's break out some pins. I'm going to scoot this over this way because it's easier for me to work this way. <laughs> and uh, at some points, I'm going to be standing up, okay? So you're going to get really close up to the top of my hair. I'm okay with that. But it's easier for me to see from this angle. And I do want to be pretty precise because this is where everything is coming together, right? And we need it all to work because if this isn't done right the next borders are not going to match up, right? So I'm going to stand up here and there. And I'm just pinning three pins just to keep this in place from one side to the next. There we go. All right, we're going to bring this over to the sewing machine. Hold on one second, y'all. Da -da -da -da. Thinking of, of doing the sections as quilt as you go to make it more easily managed. It will also mean I will actually finish the quilt. You could absolutely do this quilt as you go, right? I think you're gonna wanna work in sections, right? So like this would be a section, you could quilt it and add it to. Um, and we've said that all along, right? If you wanted to do this as quilt as you go. Um, because this quilt's gonna have a lot of size to it, right? I think it finishes at 72 or 73 inches square. That's a big size quilt. I think if you worked in sections like this, um, it would be so much more easily managed, right? There's all different kinds of methods for quilt as you go, and I'm assuming that you have experience with that. And that might be the easiest way for you to finish this quilt, absolutely. All right, we're gonna bring this over here. <laughs> we're gonna be doing lots of back and forth today, y'all. Lots of back and forth. And we're just trying to keep, Keep an eye on your quarter inch seam allowance, right? There we go. And you'll see I take these longer seams a lot more slowly. Uh, it just helps me be accurate. I wish I could be one of those quilters or those seamstresses or sewers that just zip right through there and everything still remains nice and square and straight. I'm just not that good. I am super slow. All right. So 
So we're going to come back and we're going to bring this back. Uh, Mimsy said, does quilt as you go take more backing fabric as a result of the technique? I would think you're going to be cutting it up way differently than just using one piece, one back fabric, right? Uh, depending on your method for joining your quilt as you go sections, I would think you'd have enough. But if you're cutting strips to join your sections out of your backing so that it all blends together, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I did not formulate or calculate. Oh, I'm in the wrong menu. I did not um, do the math for quilt as you go backing. But I'm kind of thinking you'd have enough. All right, so we're going to bring this over. And this is the seam we just added. And you can see in these smaller borders, uh, instead of pressing my seams open, I usually just press that seam towards the border, right? You have all of these seams coming into this direction. And you see that seam kind of just wants to naturally go in that border anyway. I'm not going to fight it. I'm just going to press that seam right towards the border. Jane says, I have just finished Clue 13 and it fitted like a glove. That is awesome. <laughs> I'll tell you, I uh, pre-sewed a good number of these sections the other day. And I was like, please, Lord, let my math have been all right. Like the stress level that I was feeling was tremendous. <laughs> because here's the thing, y'all. I'm making this quilt for the first time right along with you. So, yeah, I've been uh, on pins and needles waiting to get to this point. So far, we're all good, right? Okay, so there's that section. And I'm going to give a quick press just from the front. We might not do that as this starts to grow in size today. All right. So once we've added the left and right borders, we're going to bring it in. And she's not going to fit in there in the camera. But then we're going to add the top and bottom. And each one of those sections has five blocks across. Five blocks across, so what I'm going to do is just move it right here so that you can see. We're going to add it just like that. So my priority when adding this top and bottom border is that this seam lines up here and this seam lines up right here with this block. If I have to fudge a little, It'll probably be in this section right here, right? Um, so what I'm going to do, and usually, right, when adding borders, you'd find the center and then find the center and pin it out from there. I kind of really, really want <laughs> it to be dependent on these blocks right here. And if I have to ease anything in, I'm going to ease in this section here. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> right. So let's just pin that or pull that over. And I'm lining up that seam right there. And I'm going to pin it. Right. And then I'm going to pull everything over here. And I'm going to line up this seam right here. Right there. And I'm going to pin that. Just like that. And then let's stretch this out and see how well she fits. Actually, she's fitting pretty nicely. I'm going to go ahead and throw a pin right there. And... 
let's just pull it down a little bit right there. Actually, yeah, the rest we're just gonna ease in. I'm gonna move this over. So coming right over here. We're gonna start sewing this section. Now you can see everything, well, you can kind of see me over here, up here, right? This quilt's gonna start taking some weight and draping it over my sewing table and even dropping down here. So I'm being very mindful that I'm kind of holding things up and taking that weight away so that my seam stays nice and straight, right? Just keeping an eye that everything stays nice and lined up. Now here's where we have a little bit of fullness in this one particular section, right? Probably this block is a little bit off, right? But I don't want to mess up the alignment in this last block, that seam right there. So let's just kind of ease this in a little bit. I just kind of fudged it in there a little bit. Did you see that? So what might actually end up happening right in that section I might have a couple little tucks, a couple little uh, ripples, right? See that? We're going to try to press a good majority of that out. And in the big scheme of things, like my good friend Anitra says, that'll quilt out, <laughs> right? So let's cut off this leader. We're going to bring this over and give it a press. Miss Susan, you're working on clue number one. Clue number one, you want it to, your finished blocks to be four and a half by four and a half when you square them up. If you're paper piecing, you're gonna wanna cut your pieces bigger than the templates you're working with, right? So that you have the extra to square it up when you're all finished. So cut your pieces uh, about half an inch bigger. All right, I'm trying not to make anything really wonky, right? And stretch it out of being square. And I do think I'm gonna press these seams towards the inside of the quilt, towards that border, like that. Right there's my little tuck. <laughs> We're just gonna add some seam to it. We'll see how it does. 
I think if that's the only tuck I have, wouldn't that be wonderful? But I am kind of expecting more tucks along the way. When we turn this around after I press this seam, I'll show you why it's kind of important and why I don't mind fudging in this part so that this part lines up, right? Yeah, Mary said so many of the puckers will be hidden in the quilting. Exactly. All right, so let's turn this around and see how this just comes together. A um, little tiny bit off, but I blame that not on my seams coming together, but probably the placement because I just eyeballed my orange peels. <laughs> but our main goal is to have a visual line, right, that these kind of just connect in that border. And if we are off, if there's any spacing off from that, it's really going to deter our eye from this di diagonal line, right? And when we come over here to the other side, see that? Well, like that, <laughs> right? So for me, matching up these seams are kind of important. That gave me the little tuck there, and you almost don't even see it on the camera, right? There we go. Little tiny tuck right there. I'm pointing mine out to you so that you kind of see what could possibly happen when you're piecing yours together. When you sew your sections together and you have these little tucks, you don't show anybody. Nobody else is going to see it. You do not show nobody nothing. I'm only showing you so that you can kind of expect little things like this to happen, right? All right, so I'm gonna push that out and we're adding a section on the bottom. Same thing, I'm mainly concerned right there and anything else I'm going to just fit right on in there. So let's pull that over and I'm gonna stand up again I have my little cat proof <laughs> pin. This is my cat proof uh, pin bucket because it has a lid. They are some kind of fascinated with pin cushions. So no longer do I have the pin cushions where they can just pull pins out. All right, so let's move over to this side, which is kind of hard in this space. And I'm matching up that seam right there. And I'm just gonna take a quick visual look. It lo looks like this side is gonna fit much better the other side probably had one block that was a tiny bit bigger than eight and a half by eight and a half. <laughs> uh, and I did not square my units up, which if you have squared your units up, you're probably ahead of me in that game and your pieces are gonna fit much better. So if before you get to this stage, squaring up these units to eight and a half by eight and a half is gonna give you an advantage and less tucking like what I might have to do, right? <laughs> What's that saying? Do as I say, don't do as I do, something like that. I did not square up my blocks because I've been so busy, y'all. <laughs> and all of these things had to be done so that we could do these clues with you. So I just sewed and sewed and I did not square up any of my pieces. All right, so we're gonna bring this in. <laughs> and we're sewing this side on. And 
And I just like to get her started. I also have my sewing machine for the live sort of at an angle, which kind of gives me a disadvantage because the quilt that's hanging over this edge really is mostly hanging off the table. My best advice, I think, for today is if you have an area as this quilt grows that takes the weight off, right? Uh, that would be so helpful for you to, in just maintaining a nice straight seam. I am really hoping that in my new studio, I can mount cameras so much more differently so that I can have my sewing machine set up straight. <laughs> Wouldn't that be lovely? That would be awesome. I think this side is fitting much better than the other side did. I guess we'll see as we come closer <laughs> to the end. Oh yeah, no tucks on this side. That's wonderful. Oh yeah, see how perfectly those line up, even at the edge? go give this seam a press and as part of clue number 13 we're adding a small border to this section uh miss terry i don't have that paper right in front of me and i don't recall right off the top of my head how many yards it was for the back but what I can tell you is you can quickly find out uh, if you jump down to the description box there's a link for the whole entire quilt playlist and if you go to the playlist and you go to the very first video I go through all the requirements and I do talk about how much fabric you need for the back and so you'll find it in that first video I forget off the top of my head. <laughs> All right, and let me scoot this over a little bit. I just kind of like to pre-work that seam over and then press. She's really coming together now, isn't it? Lovely. All right, let's flip this over and see how well we lined up those seams in the corners. That block's a little off, but that's probably because this <laughs> was just eyeballed on there, <laughs> right? Same with that one, but visually, I'm okay with that. Let's just give that seam a good little quick press from the front. All right, so at this point, let me just hold this up for you, right? This is where we are at this point. Isn't that pretty? I think this is going to be the only way you can visually see the whole thing in one shot. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous, right? So pretty. 
So as part of clue 13, we are also adding, where'd she go? Oh, she's down here. We're adding the strips that we cut during clue number two. These strips were cut at one and a half inches. I do think for those of you who from the beginning wasn't sure about making this quilt, especially the size this quilt is, right? And you wanted to do a smaller version just to hang on your wall, right? Don't you think, I think at this, at this point, the quilt measures, I think 30 and a half by 30 and a half. She's getting kind of big. Um, wouldn't that be lovely on the wall? Just the way it is right now. You could even make this a wider border, four and a half inches wide, and do that to finish off this, and just have this as your quilt, right? So remember back a couple of clues into it, we were talking about if you wanted to make this quilt, but make it smaller. And I said, you might wanna hold off till the end, and then pick and choose the clues you do, right? Because some of the clues you won't do at all if you want to make a smaller version of this quilt. Well, you could do all the clues that make up this block here and just make this, right, your quilt before even adding on the next borders. Wouldn't that be pretty? All right, so we're square. It doesn't much matter what side we start on when adding this border. <laughs> So I'm just going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to add the border to two sides opposite of one another. Then I'm going to bring that back and give those borders a press. And then we're going to add the other two borders. And I'm going to try to move through it pretty quickly so you don't get bored with me. <laughs> but I totally understand, you know, it, when you're adding little borders like this, it does get monotonous. If you're watching on the replay, you can just quickly skip to the next section, right? But those who are here live with me, thank you for your patience as we add the borders. All right. We're going to come over here. I feel like I missed so much of the chat, and I apologize for that. Oh, hold on a second. What did I do? Oh, okay. I have four individual sections. I did not piece my strips together <laughs> because they're long enough without having to sew them together. See that? I have four sections. Here we go. Again, I'm just trying to keep everything straight because it's just wanting to slide right off of my table here. I have a little salvage edge. I'm going to just cut that off. <laughs> See that? I didn't even cut that off. There we go. All right. Cooperate, little strippy. Everything is just wanting, see how it's just kind of pulling, pulling off the side. That's frustrating. If you're someone who likes to cut your borders exactly the precise size, right? And then put them on. Um, I believe it says on this sheet, you should start off with your borders. I think it was 30 and a half by 30 and a half. I think that's right.
I'm kind of just squaring up my quilt as we go along by matching up those corner blocks. And that's how I'm trying to keep my quilt nice and square. See, so I'm just very gently laying that on there and I'm not pulling it, so I'm not forcing it on there, but gently just laying it on. It's nice and flat, but I'm not pulling and I'm also not allowing for any extra. Make sure it stays nice and straight all the way. And I'm going to flip it right around while we're right here and add the next piece right across the way from it. Again, I'm going to cut this little salvage edge off. <laughs> There we go. But I did not cut it straight, right? That's not straight. So I do give myself a little bit of extra. I guess I could have left that, that edge on. But there we go. All right, see how she's wanting to pull? I'm gonna just put all this extra just folded up right there, so hopefully she's not pulling too much. <laughs> it's not enough yet. She still wants to slide right off of there. I'm also kind to try to brush those little uh, fraying threads out of that seam allowance if I remember to do that. That's less strings I have to trim when I go to quilt this one day. Let's get those threads to scoot it over there. I will say, overall, this fabric has done really well as far as fraying goes. I mean, I think that's pretty minimal. I've worked with fabrics that have frayed way more than these have. And we've worked with these pieces a lot. I will say I'm pretty pleased with the fabric. See how fast I went right there? Whoopsies. All right, let's go give these two borders a press. And we know for sure <laughs> this is not all gonna fit in the camera. All right, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna stand up and press. I think I'm gonna be able to see so much better. 
But see all these seams right there? Just like we did with this border right here. I'm gonna press these seams toward this small little border just like we did with the border before it. And I'm really not trying to stretch anything. I'm just trying to make sure that everything is nice and flat. All the stress while moving. I wasn't too, too stressed out up until yesterday when the pod came for my stuff. <laughs> then all of a sudden, I felt a little pressure. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, oh, no. I got to really start getting on it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's really when the pressure started to set in. Before yesterday, I was like, oh, moving is so easy. Moving is so much fun. Yesterday, the pod showed up for the studio stuff, and I was like, um, it just got real all of a sudden. So today, today I am actually finishing up eight Etsy orders for photos on fabric, right? And those are the last ones I'm doing until after the move, because when the pod showed up, I was like, okay, I got to start packing this stuff. I can't keep just working like every day is normal anymore. I have got to pack this stuff up. So this afternoon when we're done here, I'm going to be pressing. I've already got them all prepped and printed. I'm going to be pressing some photos and packing eight orders. And then that's it. I have two quilts to quilt for clients. And then the machine gets broken down. And, uh, yeah, so I wasn't really stressed until yesterday. <laughs> and what really, um, you know, we really hadn't taken into consideration until recently, too, is that um, on the 15th, Harlan has a work trip, and he's going to be gone for a whole week. So it's kind of like a week that um, is lost. <laughs> so it kind of bumped up my schedule a little bit, right? And, uh, but I mean, overall, I'm not too, too stressed out, but I'm more stressed out now than I was this time last week. You know what I need? I need a little ruler. Oh no. Hold on a second, y'all. I moved it. <laughs> Let's get this one. And this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, this one's a little bit bigger. Trim off these little extra little pieces right there and kind of square that up right on all the four sides. I don't like usually doing it in this direction, but... We're going to do it. There we go. Right? Nice and straight across. How long until you were up and running again? <sighs> uh, well, we know the first week after we move, we are staying in the camper and we're going to go through and paint because we've decided we're no longer just painting for the next people who buy our houses anymore. We're gonna, you know, move into the house the way we want it. So we're gonna take a week and we're gonna go through and paint. And we're gonna uh, add a flooring into my studio that's gonna be way easier to sweep and clean up. <laughs> so I would say, uh, I want to say three weeks, but that's kind of hustling, isn't it? I want to say three weeks, but more realistically, it's going to be about a month. I say about a month before my studio is like really 
up and running because I not just want to set up my studio, right? I have all my kitchen stuff to put away and everything else. But a huge priority will be me up and working again, <laughs> which means my studio is going to take a, a big priority. But there's just so much to do. All right, y'all see I just went through and trimmed off all the little extra bits. Made everything nice and straight across, right? Did I get this side? I did. Did I get this side? I did. All right, all four sides. See how pretty that border is? Nice and pretty. We're going to add um, the other two borders. Oh, I thought that was sewn in the seam. On the other two sides now. They should be long enough, Sherry, because look, this is the extra that I had cut off of each one of the strips. So that should be pretty long enough. Vicki, yes, I would love to give you a tour when I get everything set up and running. All right, so now Sherry has me all stressed out. <laughs> I didn't do the math before now. Let me just double check, Sherry. <laughs> that has me second guessing. Oh, she's plenty of long enough, Sherry. You had me, you had me second guessing. I do like to just trim this little salvage edge off. Usually I do that before anyway, but let's bring it over. Okay. This is really going to tie in with these darker pieces of the orange peel, right? Isn't that pretty? All right, I got her started. Now I can start shuffling <laughs> the weight of this quilt. As we get like halfway through, she kind of does lay down over on the side. <laughs> that makes it a lot easier. Sherry, we had plenty of extras here. I'm cutting some off. around and we're going to add the border on the other side then we're going to press these two sides and then we're moving on to clue number 14 so if you want to go grab a sandwich because <laughs> you know what's going to happen and come back 
You have a few minutes. I'm trying to be quick, but I'm also, this is my forever quilt, so I'm also trying to be careful. <laughs> quick, but accurate and careful all at the same time. See those little threads? <laughs> when I'm quilting, I always like to go through and trim any threads that are coming through those seams, right? But that's time consuming when you have a bunch of threads to trim. I try my best to have as few of those as possible. And it's just going to save me a little time down the road. I feel like I should change, I should do some rebranding. You know how people have the intro like, oh, I'm Lisa Capen and I am the so-and-so quilter. I feel like I could say, hello everybody, I am Lisa Capen and I am the slow quilter. <laughs> I feel like I could rebrand while I'm shut down and come back with a whole new saying. All right, we're gonna press this border. <laughs> okay. I just like to get her started. Even the back is kind of pretty, isn't it? Gonna scoot it over. See how I'm pulling that border out, right? But I'm not really tugging it, but I'm making sure there's no extra in that fold on the other side, right? And let's flip it around and press the other side. Isn't that funny? I'm Lisa Capen, and I am the slow quilter. I want to say slow ass quilter, but sorry. <laughs> I am the slow quilter. If you were here at my house and we were just hanging out, 
I would say I am the slow ass quilter. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So what that should have done is taking it from 30 and a half inches, right? To 32 and a half inches square. <laughs> oh, and that frames it so pretty. It's going to be hard to see on this blue cutting mat, but let's go ahead and just square up these and then I'm going to hold it up so you can see how that thin little tiny border, right? It's not a huge border, but it really frames that in so nicely. I got to stand up again. And trim off these extra bits like that. Yeah, see, I have to use my body and stop it from sliding off the table. There's got to be a better way. I am excited, though, because streaming and this setup, I've learned a lot of things that if I could change... I would change, right? The extremely high ceilings in this room make it almost impossible to kind of do the setup that I think would be ideal for me. But in the new setup, hopefully, I can work through those issues. All right. Here's my little tidbits, my little nuggets. Let me hold this up so you can see how well that this really just frames it, right? Isn't that pretty? Look. Right? Just that small little border makes a huge difference. Sheila says we need that on <laughs> t-shirts. So adding that border, right, that finishes up clue number 13. So clue number 13, you're making four sections and adding it to the center medallion. And then you're adding that little border. Now we're going to just fold that up for a second. And we're bringing in these little, these little guys right there. Now I've already pre-done some of this right? Because who has time for that to sit here today as I sewed those sections together with you? But clue number 14. These little fellas here, which again, I did not square up. I did not do the paper piecing. So let's just talk about that for a second. I almost wish that I had paper pieced these pieces and I did not. I cut them uh, and pieced them like traditional piecing, right? We went over in uh, clue number one's video two different ways to make this block. I wish I would have done the paper piecing because for me, the paper piecing is so exact and precise. Next week, you're going to see how much easier it is for me to piece together sections um, that have been paper pieced. I did not paper piece these. And I feel like had I paper pieced, I would have gotten a lot more accurate results when sewing these blocks together. And the way that I pieced these, some came out exactly four and a half and some were a smidgen tiny bit smaller. So, <laughs> what you're going to see today are blocks that are not perfect. And I'm just going to lay out a couple of them. Right? 
See, this is not a straight edge right there. Let's just take a ruler and look at it. See that extra bit right there? Can you see that? It's kind of far away, but see, straight and then extra bit. So I really kind of wish I had slowed down a little bit. See how kind of ain't wonky that is? <laughs> Uh, I wish I had to slow down a little bit because my paper piecing, I just get way more accurate results. See how that's a little wonky? We're going to make it work. It's going to work. But um, I do wish I had paper pieced my little clue number one blocks. So let's talk about how many you need to assemble for each one of the four sections. Right? So... We're going to be adding them. It doesn't matter because the quilt is square and that medallion, unless you've rearranged yours in the middle, goes either way, right? So we're just going to start on one side and the other. The first two pieces, you need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you need two strips, right, that have eight of these. And then you need two strips that I think you need 10, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yes. Two strips are going to have eight. Two strips are going to have 10. And you're going to piece them together. Valerie, you didn't paper piece either. You're going to see my sewing when I sew these blocks together. My seams are going to look wonkety. <laughs> they are. Now I'm going to share a little tip with you that might be helpful. Um, but just know as I sew these together, and if you didn't paper piece either, this might be really helpful for you. If you paper pieced clue number one, still pay attention because this might come in handy down the road on a totally different quilt, right? But just know that when I go to press these seams, these seams are not going to be pretty. They're not going to have a full quarter inch seam all the way through my seams. I know that. Okay. So let's, <laughs> let's move on knowing that. <laughs> okay. Let's go over to the sewing machine. I'm still using a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm not using a scant quarter inch. I am pressing these seams open. If you're pressing these seams to one side or the other, you might find it helpful to use a scant quarter of an inch, right? So one of the things that uh, I found out when I was pre-making these strips right here <laughs> is that, uh, you know, my blocks are wonky. I mean, I think you can see See that? She kind of does this a little bit. My goal though, really, is for this seam or the little points of my triangles to be close together. Not necessarily touch, but I want them close together. Uh, so what you might see me do is take a little pin, right? And I'm gonna start on the back side See how you can see through that a little bit? I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to bring it in right in that point. See that? Right in that point. And then I'm going to take this block and I'm going to put that pin right into that point. That's going to match up my blocks for the most point, for the most, yeah, for the most point. <laughs> uh, and eliminate some of the wonkiness that I'm going to have going on here, right? So let me just straighten that out. I'm going to go ahead and pin that together like that. I'm going to straighten this out as much as possible, right? There we go.
you're going to see that not all my seams match up, right? And at this point, with my finger, I can remove that pin. Sometimes that little trick works perfectly. Sometimes it don't. I don't know why. <laughs> but my points are pretty close together. See that? And I'm okay with that. So then I'm going to bring in the next one. And I'm just going to do the same thing. And I'm just going to keep working through until I've made this one little strip with you. Pardon my shaky fingers, y'all. So at least I know we're going straight across, right? <laughs> Poke the little pin in there. And it's easier for me to hold it up here, so uh, you'll see me up here in the corner. Much easier for me to hold it up and work like this and then bring it down here like that. Now what you might find is uh, instead of piecing one border at a time, like what you see me doing here, right? Uh, if you were to work on four borders at the same time, sort of chain piece these, you might find it's uh, a little bit faster. I did my borders individually though, because um, I mean, I'm not even going to try and sugarcoat it. <laughs> these these pieces being wonky for me because um, they're really not that accurate at all with my piecing. I really had to just slow down and do each one of these borders individually. And I was really wishing that I had paper pieced. I really did. I think y'all are going to, you know, you'll be able to look and see what pieces we have left after today and kind of figure out how the rest of this quilt's gonna look, right? But we are working with the paper pieced, well, I paper pieced the sections we're working with next week. So next week is not gonna be a struggle for me at all. <laughs> Cause they just turned out so perfectly. And it might've taken me quite a bit of time longer to make those pieces, but it's so worth it for me. Now I'll tell you, that little needle trick like that, for me, it's helpful, although it does slow up the process a little bit. Uh, I tried just eyeballing the block on there and uh, my little diamonds didn't really match up. So for me, it is worth just taking a second 
and aligning those points. And while it still might not be exactly perfect, it helps a lot for me. That didn't sound good. All right, we have one more and then we can start pressing these. So eight in your first two sections and 10 in your second two borders. Go press these wonkety seams. <laughs> okay. I know I had to warm her back up because she's been asleep for a minute. So we have lots of little triangles here, right? All these little red bits. For you, they might be a different color, but all these outside pieces make each one of these blocks a little bit stretchy, right? If you were to take this strip and just go like this, see that stretch? We're trying to avoid not stretching it too much, <laughs> right, as we press these seams. Now I know there's tricks where you could spin these seams or do whatever to these middle seams. I'm not good with those tricks, <laughs> but I do like to press these seams open, right? So I'm just opening them up a little bit. That seam right there is super thick. I'm sure there's a way you could spin that little seam and make it a little bit flatter. I know my strong points and I know my weaknesses. And I've come to terms with them and that means for me not spinning seams. Not right now. But there was also a time in my quilting journey where pressing seams open was not part of something I did. So down the road I might start spinning my seams and having an easier time with it. But for now I just deal with a little bit of a thicker seam right there. Like that. See that stretch? Careful not to pull it. You kind of want to straighten it up a little bit, but you don't want to really pull it and make it longer than it's supposed to be. And working down this way. Oh, so Jacqueline got the hang of spinning seams. I, for me, I just, I'm so awkward at it. And for me, it's so time consuming. I'm just like, nope, okay, keep on going, Lisa. I do think if you were, especially if you were planning on doing like a stitch in the ditch 
or stitching right along that seam somewhere, that thicker seam is going to get in your way, isn't it? Or if you're hand quilting, can you imagine trying to go through that seam? I've predominantly moved on to an edge to edge quilting design <laughs> uh, with all of my quilts. For one, because of my shaky hands, like doing custom quilting is just, uh, I got so frustrated with it. And uh, so predominantly I'll let the computer drive and it just so happens when you do an edge to edge quilting design that a lot of the seams are missed. Some of them, it does go through the seams, but if you're doing a planned out custom quilting and you know you're going to be quilting and your quilting is going to go in those seams right there, spinning your seams will make your life so much easier. <laughs> I will say that. It would be worth taking the time to do it. All right, so let's just take a look. Predominantly, I'm going straight across, right? Right there, she's a little off. <laughs> if yours is off, do not show that to nobody. Do not say, oh, look, right here they don't meet, and right there they don't meet. No one cares. No one's going to see that. So don't you do that, okay? Don't do what I'm telling. Don't do that. In the big scheme of things, they're just going to see this wonderful quilt, right? Predominantly, my goal is just to have them all kind of at least be straight. That was my goal. <laughs> have them go straight and at least meet, you know, all in the middle. All right. So what we have here is we have two strips that have eight and two strips that have 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are my 10 strips. And again, just like, um, when I added the blocks on that first section, clue number 13, I really just want to pay attention <laughs> to let's pull this up. Here we go. Let's pull this one in. Oh, no, so, okay. <laughs> Let me just see how this is going to fit before I start pinning anything. And for that, I have to stand up. So that seam and that seam. All right, so right here and right there, you have a seam. And I'm going to try my best to get those lined up, right? And that's just going to keep it all nice and straight. Without stretching it too much. So I'm going to throw a pin right in there. And I think overall, she fits perfectly, even with my wonky little blocks. I'm just gonna kind of pin it a couple of times here and there, just to keep this strip in place, because she's getting some size to her. And then we're only gonna go to the sewing machine once. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this border on too. So we're not going back and forth, back and forth. There we go. I am 
so hungry. The time is at 1.30. Actually, we're not doing too bad, are we? We're not doing too bad. Should I go through the entire clue with you, or do y'all get the idea? We're adding these borders the same exact way we did clue 13's borders. Adding the two sides first, and then the next two. So here's a good little example <laughs> of just the wonkiness in my blocks. See how this, it's going to be hard to see because the blue, but see that? I might have to stretch this just a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit, just a smidgen for it to be the same length. I think that's all those triangles in there. There we go. You got the idea. All right. I'm going to sew these first two borders on. We're going to press them. How about that? started and then kind of just pull everything up here like that adjusting as we go right for the most part she's lining up pretty well One of my main goals with these borders here with clue number 14, like I really don't want to lose the points in my diamonds. That's one of my goals. And also that they fit because I already know some of them weren't exactly four and a half inches <laughs> due to my piecing, right? So I don't want to lose my points, hopefully, and I want them to fit. So I think you're going to see it a little bit better here. See that little extra? I know this is right, and this is probably where I've lost some. So I am going to just pull it out just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. And the good news is some of that will be in our seam allowance, right? So let's go ahead and flip this over and I will sew this side with you. We'll press these seams and we'll see how she's looking.
I do think this is going to be a very eye-catching quilt. I really do. seam to flip over. There we go. to the very edge here and that side lines up a lot better doesn't it all right let's go give these two borders a press and let's just see how I did with my little points keep in mind we still have points on the other side of these borders, right? Because we're going to add a solid border to these. And I am going to press these seams towards that border. So y'all hold on a second for the big reveal. been a lot of work up to this point hasn't it <laughs> and although I feel like the weeks have just flown by I don't know how you feel about it maybe because I just have so much going on that I really just feel like the weeks have gone by and in the last couple weeks we've kind of doubled up on the clues right this has been a lot of work to get to this point and I've been so proud of y'all. I'm going to flip this side around and press this side before we flip it over. I absolutely love looking at your pictures over on the creative crew. I love that. Actually, these two first borders went on a lot easier than I thought. They did not give me half the fit that I thought that they were going to give me, <laughs> even as being as wonky as they were. Like, I was kind of stressing out about adding those, this border on. It actually went on a lot easier than I thought it was going to. So now I can take a deep breath. <laughs> like I was laying in bed this morning and I was like, man, I wish I would paper piece those. I think I would have had a much easier time today in the live. I hope it goes okay. Ooh, look at there. Isn't that pretty? I do like to press from this side too, but I'm not going to go through and do all of that shuffling around but isn't that pretty that is so pretty and then it ties in with that thinner border right there too right so isn't that so pretty Wanda said, when you're ready to do the quilting on your long arm, have you chosen a design yet? I'm going to tell you, I really like uh, the orange peels. I'm kind of teetering on doing an orange peel quil quilting design over the entire thing. But I also think in doing that, 
is it going to compete with this border? So then I'm like, maybe I should do a floral. And I do have a quilting design that has flowers that are kind of shaped like this. Kind of. And I think that would be gorgeous, quilted across this quilt. Um, so I don't know yet. <laughs> Kathy said, my afternoon will be at the machine. Love this pattern. Thank you, Kathy. I hope you have so much fun today. Now, okay, so I really think, like, you get it. And I could add the other two sides and then add the solid border on. But I think you get it. We're repeating this process from Clue 13 with this process, right? And ultimately... I mean, the goal is to have everything nice and square as we're adding these borders and then squaring up these borders. That's kind of important. If you have any extra, like when I add mine, I have the little tabs. After you add them and press, do your squaring up here so that these borders, these borders are sewn together as sections to fit edge to edge at the end of these solid borders, right? So make sure you're squaring it up as you're going along. Grandma Dia said, what about an echo design on the blue and green section? I, w I think that would be stunning. I personally, um, I just have a harder time with more custom quilting here lately. And then I stress myself out, which makes my trimmers even more like sporadic. <laughs> so, and I want to enjoy my time. And when I start getting stressed out doing the quilting, I don't think that's any fun. I think uh, an echo quilting would be lovely. And I hope somebody does that and shares pictures of it. I think that would be stunning. It's just I personally know I'm going to do an edge-to-edge -edge design and just get it quilted. I just don't know which one yet. But yeah, I mean, imagine all the possibilities. You have all of this space here. You have all of this space, the negative space within this medallion to do some beautiful custom quilting, right? I really think you do. <clears throat> Ah, oh, the Baptist fan would look good, don't you think? Yeah, maybe that one. I don't have that design, but I've been wanting a reason to get it. <laughs> and that would be gorgeous. Yes. I've been wanting a quilt. I've been wanting a reason to get the Baptist fan quilting design. And this just might be it. So, oh, isn't that pretty? You're gonna sew on the next two borders, and then you have your solid border coming in as part of clue 14, right? That's gonna be a four and a half four and a half inch border. That really frames this in nicely, doesn't it? Look at that. Doesn't that just really frame all of that in so beautifully? It does. And then so next week, we're going to finish up this whole series with one more border with the remaining pieces. And so, yeah, I'm kind of excited to see the whole thing come together. I do think next week, uh, I will have three of the borders pre-sewn, kind of like what I had today, right? And I will... Uh, work on those section one section with you so that you see how it's done the other three borders will be done and so uh, I am going to complete this quilt here with you next Friday so that when we're done with next week's video when I hold it up you're gonna see my finished quilt top thank y'all so much But yes, I think that's going to be so pretty on there. Lovely. 
So I have a little bit of homework. I'm going to add the next two sides and then that solid border. But she's coming along so pretty. Yes, she is. I'm going to just scoot her right there. <laughs> I have lost my main rotary cutter. <laughs> this is my little one. This is the one I like to do hand stuff with, right? Like hand trimming around stuff. This is my little one. And then I have a big one, like the Mambo Jumbo one that I cut through layers of jeans and stuff with. But my regular one I'm using, that I use every single day, I have lost it. I've lost it. I cannot find it. Alexandria said, what do you think of watercolor black and white batiks with black and white prints? Mmm. Ooh. Someone in the creative crew is doing a gray themed quilt. They're doing the mystery quilt in tones of gray. <laughs> it's beautiful. Have you seen it? <laughs> uh... I think that would be stunning. I like batiks anyway, though. Uh, and watercolors are really kind of soft, right? I think that would be pretty. I have to check everything. Sharon said, ask the cat. I know. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking that they were up here finagling around and like I'm going to find it behind the shelf when we move it or something because I know I used it yesterday and I've I've looked and I just don't see it. I think it they were probably up here tussling and it got flown back somewhere. Uh, Alexandria said, uh, said, so sad this is ending. Well, the awesome thing is, uh, I mean, don't you think it was fun? I plan on doing another quilt, maybe not this big. <laughs> Once I'm all back and set up, I don't have it planned out yet. So I imagine we're going to do some smaller projects once I come back. Once I come back, we'll probably do some smaller projects more along the lines of this, right? About this size <laughs> for a little while as I plan out the next uh, bigger project that we're going to do. I really like, I mean, I know not everybody likes the mystery quilt set up, right? They like to know what they're making in advance. I kind of love a mystery quilt. Do y'all remember back when we did the stained glass flower like one of the first mystery quilts that I did do y'all remember that something along those kind of lines about that size that, seems, that size seems very manageable for a lot of people this quilt we're making now is pretty big <laughs> it's kind of big Hazel said I always check my bins as I've been known to scoot all sorts in there, what shouldn't be. Yeah, I know. I, I've checked all of my trash cans because I thought, well, maybe I scooped it up with some papers and threw, them, threw it away. So I know it's not in the trash. That's a good thing. I know it's not in the trash. All right, my live chat is messing up, which I, is kind of telling me it's probably a good time to go eat some lunch finish up this quilt, and press some photos. So uh, please post your pictures. Please stay in touch. If you have questions or if you have problems downloading the pattern, reach out to me. I don't mind send it, sending it to you in an email. Just to let you know, I have not changed the way that I'm providing the links. So if you've been able to get them before and now all of a sudden you can't download the links. I'm kind of thinking you need to do like some kind of update because I have not changed 
the way that I'm delivering the links to you. Cheryl said, can you paint the next quilt? Hey, you want to do a painting on fabric quilt? Everybody's so different. Like some people really love the painting on fabric. And then a lot of people kind of tune that out because it's not their thing, right? Everybody's so different. I love painting on fabric. <laughs> it's kind of my jam. How long will you be down? I think about a month. All together. I want to say a month, maybe a little longer. Uh, what I would say is that when um, I plan on giving lots of like picture updates and updates on progress on Facebook, and I know not everybody does Facebook. What I would like to do is maybe a couple little short videos of progress so you know where I am in the move, right? Here's the empty studio, you know, and I might do this and that. And then as I start setting up, maybe do a couple of little short videos just to keep you abreast of where we are. Um, my goal is that I'm not down forever. <laughs> and the shorter amount of possible, the best for me. Because, you know, this is, uh, this is my work too, right? So the longer I'm down you know, the less money I make. Plain and simple. I am a business. I provide services and stuff like that. So my goal is to get it up and running as, as fast as possible. In addition, that allows me to come hang out with you faster. Right? It does. Six weeks is probably not um, far from being reality. Six weeks, maybe. <laughs> I just don't want to make promises. I, I know I, I can't keep. All right, everybody. I'm off to go eat me a sandwich or something. Uh, I hear Sharon, Harlan's down in the garage. Maybe he'll go get us some Chick-fil-A. Maybe we'll, we'll ride over to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> and then I'll get back to work. Okay, everybody. Uh, for certain, I'll see you over on Facebook. And to keep me updated with your pictures, I'll go through this evening and read all the chat that I've missed. I know it's a lot. I'm so sorry if I've missed any important like questions and stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs>